G'day guys, yes, this video has been a long time coming. Many people have been asking for it and don't worry, it's all here from the absolute basics to my super secret advanced tactics. This is essentially a masterclass for the egg game. Now for those of you who are looking at me like, what is this guy on about? There are three hidden mini games in the trade in of Don't Starve Together. You can access these by clicking on the different birds and there's currently a memory game, a candy crush style game and an egg game. The first two involve either a lot of chance or an immeasurable amount of time to get a high score, but the egg game, see the egg game is different. It manages to hit that sweet spot between logic, skill and chance to make a game that's not only incredibly addictive, but also very satisfying. I've been playing this game at the end of my DST streams for quite a while now and I even said that I'd give a gift sub to anyone who could beat my high score but since it hasn't been claimed in about a year I figured I'd give you guys a bit of help. Like I said I'm going to start with the basics of how to play but if you already know the rules you can skip ahead to the more advanced stuff by using the chapters or the timestamps in the description. So, the idea of the game is to combine adjacent numbers to reach exactly 100 in as many tiles as possible. Doing this will create an egg. The quicker you make your eggs, the more points you'll gain from doing so, and if you take too long and the timer on the left runs out, you'll be left with a rotten egg, which you get basically no points from. So simply put, your goal is to make as many eggs as possible in the shortest amount of time. But of course, it's a little bit more complicated than that. There are different strategies you can use to combine numbers and ways of organizing the tiles and the eggs to give you an advantage as you progress throughout the game. One of the main things you want to avoid is blocking other tiles. You can do this by making an egg on the wrong spot or forming a number that's too high to move out of the way. Generally, the best practice is to build from the corners and then move up in rows. This gives you the greatest amount of flexibility when making your eggs because sometimes the numbers that you need just don't come straight away. In the early stages of the game, try to focus on making one egg at a time. I generally spam adding onto one tile until it gets to around 80 before I start to look for ways to complete it. I'm not the greatest at math, so I try to limit the numbers I need to add to below 20. Keeps things simple. If you can't complete the egg you're working on with the numbers nearby, you can start working on the next one in the meantime, but be careful when you do this because if you have too many high numbers all at once, you run the risk of blocking others off, either by accident or just because there's simply not enough space to not block another tile. The first two rows are often quite straightforward, and if you create eggs building up from the corners, with a bit of practice you should be able to get halfway through the game with minimal difficulty more often than not. The top two rows are a lot more difficult since you have less space to work with and since so much of the final tiles rely on luck, we're going to switch up the egg placement for this section a bit to try and maximize the opportunities you have of getting the right numbers. Like normal, the corners should be completed first before choosing one of the remaining tiles on the third row. It doesn't really matter which one, you'll be left with a shape that looks like one of the Tetris pieces and then an extra tile on the side. Generally, I want to complete the extra tile first and then move on to the Tetris tiles. By using this formation, you have three choices to place every number that falls. But at this point of the game, if you get an option to complete a tile, you really shouldn't turn it down. 15 eggs are the most that you can possibly make. And honestly, if you can get that far, you've done extremely well, regardless of score. So with everything that I've told you and some practice, you can start posting some pretty good scores. With the full 15 eggs, you'd be looking at scores ranging from 37,000 to around 40,000, depending on how quickly you go. But as I'm sure you've noticed, my high score is a little bit higher than that. And I think this is the point of the video where if you're new to the egg game, you should really practice the basics first. But if you feel like you've got that covered, then it's time to talk advanced tactics. Now, when it comes to your score, there are two different ways of generating points. Firstly, the egg itself. Each egg will give you a sizable amount of points as long as you make it before the timer runs out. This ranges from around 2500 if made immediately to roughly 900 if the timer is about to expire. And this will no doubt form the bulk of your points. If you get 15 eggs, you can hope to get at least 30,000 points 
just from the creation of these eggs. But in addition to this, you also accumulate points for every combination of numbers you make. And this is the most important one for experienced players as it's something you can manipulate to get higher scores. Let me give you an example. Say you have a tile with 80. You could join it to a 20 to give you 100 points. Or you could join that same 80 to a 10, then a 5, then another 5 to give you 285 points. Both scenarios will get you to 100 for the egg, but one gives you almost three times as many points as the other. I call this technique meandering. Instead of going straight for the easiest solve, you get many more points by taking a roundabout way of getting there, making as many different combinations as you can along the way, but only as long as it doesn't take you a significant amount of time to do so. Otherwise you'd get extra points for making more combinations, but you'd lose them by not making the eggs quickly. A good way of doing this is by creating a stack, or a tile that you intend to become the next egg, and either feeding the stack with the numbers around it, or moving the stack, depending on your situation. Where possible, it's also better to use the larger numbers first to get the stack higher before adding smaller numbers to complete the egg. As you can see, small numbers are pretty valuable and you should try your best not to use them unless you're adding them to a high number or you need to sacrifice it to complete an egg. This creates a bit of a risk reward situation where you can get a high score by using more of the small numbers but if you do so, you might be left with only large numbers that will make things harder for you as a result. So you need to be mindful of what you're leaving on the board as well as what you're using. Another thing you've probably noticed from watching the clips I've been showing is that I tend to make a lot of eggs by adding tiles in an L shape. For whatever reason, I find that the game can add the tiles quicker when adding numbers from different directions as opposed to adding tiles in the same direction repeatedly probably only makes a small difference, but every little bit counts, right? And in the same line of thinking, another really small thing to be mindful of, when you create an egg, a red bird will fly away from that tile, and this bird can actually block your clicks. And when you're adding numbers as quickly as you can, this can really stuff you up, so try to click around the bird if possible. And now I want to take you guys through a game that I played just before. I just want to show you guys my thinking in more of a practical setting and explain the moves that I'm making as I'm doing them. Also, just saying, this guy talks an absolute shitload and he's so annoying. So eventually you just kind of drown it out, but it can be frustrating. I'm going to take this run very, very slowly to explain as I go. So there's no way that I'll get even remotely close to this high score, but I just want to show you my process. And it's probably going to be hard for me to go slowly because I'm just so used to speeding along, but I'll try my best. So right off the bat, I see a lot of high numbers here and a lot of low numbers here. So I'll try to, I like to get rid of as many high numbers as I can early off. But what I'll do, I'll get this to around 80. And then I might try to pinch a couple of these high numbers. So I need a 16. These can all go together, thankfully. And then I'll do I'll try to do the same thing. But see, I'm still left with so many high numbers here. Thankfully, I think that's 28 that I need, and I have two 14s. So I'm just gonna add them both together, move everything off to the side, and this is gonna leave me with eleven which is kind of precarious. But again, I can deal with that later. Oh, there we go. It's got an eight and a three. Um, again, you can see me moving. I essentially will just move the biggest number around that I see. So right now, my next focus will be this 39 and I'll just take it and put it in there. Easy. Um, I need a 19. I have a 19 over there, but it's a little bit too far for me to move. I might just make it a little bit smaller because my brain is being stupid. Um, 14. I think 8 and 6 is 14. Yep. There you go, easy. Um, normally, I want to be around 11,000 at this point. 11,000 is a pretty decent run. Uh, obviously... Not really going to get there at this point, but yeah. 
and pretty safe going at the moment. Had the 19 already lined up there. Uh, as I said before, I like to go in the L shape because it's quicker, although it's not really necessary for this run. Um, if I had that 5 to join to the 13, that would have been good. There is a benefit to going slower. You notice more, but the time that you lose is not really worth it. So um, just me going slower now, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of things that I would normally have missed, but it's not worth it in the end. I would have had a higher score had I gone ahead and missed things. Anyway, um, we're in a pretty good spot at the moment. Hmm. Oh, that worked out really well. Nice. And then I'll try to move on to this tile here. This one is will give me the most breathing room. Ooh, if I had the 8 and the 19, that would have been good. I could put those two there, but then it leaves me in an awkward, sh awkward spot. I think I might just take my chances here. Yeah, I was, that was the right move. It just, it, sometimes it's tempting to take the easy solve. And I know I even mentioned before that you probably should but it can also stuff you up in the sense that taking that tile will make it so much harder to get any other tiles that you're better off not taking it. I'm going to move this over here and then we'll work on... There we go. I was giving myself two options to get the small numbers here. See if I can get... Now I need a 7 here and a 10 here. I'm not going to... Should I put a 9? Hmm, then it only leaves me one choice. I think I, I think I'll chuck the nine down and then we'll try to get the five, now a two. Yeah, unfortunate. I've got 12 eggs, already 31,000 points. It's pretty good, pretty good for that, that score. When you get to this point of the game, there's really not much you can do. You just have to try and go with the odds. So if you have the option of working on a, a 10 or working on a 7, you work on the 10 because you have three more numbers that could fall that you can put in there. That's just all you can do, really. So yeah, hopefully this video has given you all you need to know to become a pro at the egg game. If you do manage to beat my high score, make sure to jump into my Discord and let me know about it. Although no guarantees that my score won't be higher by then. Good luck and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.